The Quran and Hadith accuse the Jews of having killed the prophets. Whose and which prophets did they allegedly kill? It is ironic that the Jew hater Muhammad should include the above statement in his Quran. Why should Muhammad care if the Jews killed any of their own? They were not killing Arab prophets, not that there were any after all. Did all the Jews of the ancient world participate in these killings? Are all the Jews all over this globe guilty for the acts of some individuals or groups among them? If so, then all the followers of Muhammad, all hundreds of millions of them, should be held responsible for all the acts of terror conducted by some of them in the name of Allah and Muhammad and Islam. The same can also be applied to Christianity. The Crusaders committed heinous crimes not only against the Mohammedans, but also against other Christian sects and Jews in Europe. They did so in the name of Christianity. But Jesus never allowed such acts of wanton mass slaughter or any acts of violence whatsoever. Should all Christians all over the world be held responsible for these acts, Christians in Africa, in Asia, in the Americas, for all time? Also, should all the followers of Muhammad be held responsible, all hundreds of millions of them, for the real slaughter of Umar ibn al-Khattab, of Uthman bin Affan, of Ali ibn Abi Talib, of al Hussein bin Ali, and all of the tens of Khalifas who suffered the same fate during 1400 years of Muhammadan Islam? Of course, some inordinately clever Muhammadan will remark, but these were not prophets. True, but they were, according to the traditions, Allah's regents on earth carrying the mantle of the Quran and Muhammad's Sunnah. Can any follower of Muhammad reveal to our listeners which group of Jews killed which prophets? Could they also reveal the circumstances and dates of these events? Can any one of them name these allegedly slaughtered prophets? Why do the followers of Muhammad always use a double standard with an obscene degree of hypocrisy, whereby they attack the religious beliefs and integrity of Christians, Jews, Hindus, Buddhists, Zoroastrians, animists, and pagans, but will not accept or allow any criticism of their own wanting cult belief system? Al-Baqarah 2.87 Is it that whenever there comes to you an apostle, with what you yourselves desire not, you are puffed up with pride. Some you called impostors, and others you slay. 291. Say, why then have you slain the prophets of Allah in times gone by, if you did indeed believe? Al-Imran 3.21. As to those who deny the signs of Allah and in defiance of right, slay the prophets, and slay those who teach just dealing with mankind, announce to them a grievous penalty. So-called believers and unbelievers, be aware of the following facts. 1. The Qur'an lists about a dozen Hebrew prophets and kings such as Adam, Noah, Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, Aaron, Job, Idris, David and Solomon. Not one of them was killed by either the Israelites or the Jews. 2. Even in the singular case of Jesus, he was executed according to the Roman law of crucifixion as a rebel and not under the mosaic law of regime of stoning to death. 3. Muhammad's Quran very strangely omits to mention a single name of the great Hebrew prophets after Moses, such as Samuel, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Hosea, Amos, and 11 more of them. Yet all the Jews, very conveniently and without a single proof, are accused of slaughtering their prophets. As we have shown throughout our series, that the astounding lack of veracity in the Qur'an precludes it from having ever been divinely revealed. That the Qur'an in reality is the sole product of Muhammad's own alter ego. His hatred, lust, narcissism, anger, fear, total incomprehension of the biblical events and characters, historical and space dislocations, grammatical and lexical errors, plagiarism, etc. But cleverly projected into the unsuspecting mouth of Allah, the name of the supreme rock god of the Kaaba. Ladies and gentlemen, please remember that Muhammad's Quran went through two distinct stages. That of Mecca period, wherein the verses are truly conciliatory, and those of the Medina period, which are hate-mongering and war-mongering, that abrogated, overruled, or overturned most of the earlier ones. 
These abrogating and abrogated verses occur in 71 out of 114 chapters, representing an incredible 62.28% change of Allah's mind, are actually a reflection of Muhammad's own split personality. On the one hand, he recites a decent, humane, and just precept or concept. Then, on the other hand, he overturns and replaces it with another hate-mongering and merciless one. Take the following as representing only a few examples. Sahih al-Bukhari hadith 6.298 narrated by Abu Huraira. Allah's apostle said, No child is born except in al-Fitra, Islam. And then his parents make him Jewish, Christian, or Magian. As an animal produces a perfect young animal, do you see any part of its body amputated? Fitra is an Arabic word meaning innate human nature or primordial nature of sinlessness and innocence. Sahih al-Bukhari 4.256 narrated by Asab bin Jassama. The Prophet was asked whether it was permissible to attack the pagan warriors at night with the probability of exposing their women and children to danger. The Prophet replied, they, the women and children, are of them, i.e. the pagans. So what happened to the innocence or state of fitra that Muhammad had earlier attributed to children? Al-Baqarah 2.136 Say ye, we believe in Allah and the revelation given to us and to Abraham, Ismail, Isaac, Jacob and the tribes, and that given to Moses and Jesus, and that given to all prophets from their Lord. We make no difference between one and another of them, and we bow to Allah in Islam. Al-Fatih 48.28 it is he who has sent his apostle with guidance and the religion of truth, Islam, to proclaim it over all religion. In an instant, they make no difference between one and another of them, evaporates into thin air, and is replaced by the assertion, Islam will prevail over every other religion. So, this is the example of the tolerance of Muhammad and Islam that we hear so much about. Al-Baqarah 2.256 there is no compulsion in religion, for the right way is clearly from the wrong way. Al-Imran 3.85 Anyone desires a religion other than Islam, never will it be accepted of him. So what happened to the no compulsion statement that Allah instructed Muhammad to recite? Al-Baqarah 2.62 Those who believe in the Quran and those who follow the Jewish scriptures and the Christians and the Sabians and who believe in Allah and the last day and work righteousness shall have their reward with their Lord. On them shall be no fear, nor shall they be grieving. Al-Imran 3.118 O you who believe, take not into your intimacy those outside your religion, pagans, Jews, and Christians. They will not fail to corrupt you. They only desire your ruin. Rank hatred has already appeared from their mouths. What their hearts conceal is far worse. 3.73 and believe no one unless he follows your religion. This is tolerant Muhammadan Islam at its mildest form. Al-Ankabut 29.46 And dispute ye not with the people of the book except with means better. Say, we believe in the revelation which has come down to us and with that which came down to you. Our Allah and your Allah is one and it is to him we bow in Islam. Al-Saf 61.9 it is he who has sent his apostle with guidance and the religion of truth, Islam, that he may proclaim it over all religion, even though the pagans may detest it. Another beautiful example of the compassion, tolerance, and mercy of the cult of Muhammad. Al-Kafirun 109.6 Unto you your religion, and unto me my religion. Akum dinakum waliya dini. Al-Tawbah 9.29 Fight those who believe not in Allah nor the last day, nor hold that forbidden which has been forbidden by Allah and his apostle, nor acknowledge the religion of truth, Islam, even if they are the people of the book, Jews and Christians, until they pay the jizya with willing submission and feel themselves humiliated. So-called believers, how can you intellectually, morally or theologically judge or accept as true that such incontrovertibly and blatantly contradictory statements are emanating from any omniscient and infallible divinity.